G'day guys, Mark from the Hunters Campfire. It's a um, hot, humid and rainy afternoon and uh, I'm in the shed fixing RC cars. Become quite the mechanic this year. Recently we got a couple of questions about uh, fitting scopes and some details about how to go about that. So this afternoon I've decided to um, shoot a video about how I go about fitting a scope. The video starts with a bare rifle and gets you to a point where you can take that rifle and scope to the range to sight it in. I do uh, reinforce a couple of times through the video the importance of being able to do fine adjustments once you've started to shoot it at the range but the idea is we're going to get you a stable platform to get to the range and sight that rifle in. For me, when I'm working on a firearm, be it rifle or shotgun, what I want to do is achieve three things. The first thing is I want to achieve is efficiency. I want to do this as quickly and efficiently as possible. Secondly, I want to almost build in as much as I can reliability and functionality. I want this to leave my workshop and go to the range and I've got complete confidence in the setup. I don't want to get to the range and start to wonder if I haven't set it up right or there's something wrong with the system. And thirdly, and probably just as importantly, is I hate ugly firearms. I want to do this in a way that actually looks good. So that's really important to me. If I'm going to own something, I'm going to use something, I want it to look good. For me, this all starts with clamping the rifle. Now this is, as you can see, it's a Dremel clamp. It's actually like a, you know, a desktop clamp, but I've modified it to become, I think, a really good rifle clamp. The reason I like this one in particular is it's actually got two clamping points. So no matter the shape of the rifle, I can, with a couple of shims, which are little bits of carpet, I can secure basically any rifle or shotgun in this clamp. And it's small too, so I can move it around. So for me, once it's clamped, I get the rifle level and I find a flat surface on the rifle and I put my level on there and get it leveled up. Then with the help of this very cool little tool, I can then adjust this clamp on the barrel, make sure it's level, which it is. Now, no matter what I do with that rifle, that clamp is attached to the barrel. So I, I can always have a level reference point. So the next step is to put the bases on. Um, all bases are different. You know, they're different designs by manufacturers. So there isn't a hard and fast rule other than to make sure they're facing the right direction. Now, when I look at these ones, I can't see a forward and back. So what I'm going to do, since I can't obviously see a forward and back, is I'm going to put the locking mechanism on the opposite side of the bolt. So in that way, in no way can it inhibit the bolt action. The other thing is there's a center bar here, which looks like it acts as a recoil lug. And again, it's right in the center, so it's hard to tell if it's a forward or that what's forward and what's um, back on this particular set of mounts. So if you look at the small rails here, you can see there's a, a channel there and there's a channel there. And so those two channels fit into their locking place. Something like that. Okay, so let's get them fitted. <coughs> now, as I said, they're nearly always different, and in this particular one, the mount is connected by quite a large thread bolt, if you will, that goes all the way through, and it's got this open socket end of it. There's a hole, you can see that hole, there's a corresponding hole on the other side, and I'm assuming that basically you could put something in there and turn it and crank it down. The thing I don't like about that is I don't know how to what poundage I'm cranking that down to. So I don't know how much is too much and how much is not enough. So this is where having a collection of tools over the years comes into play. 
I've got this little neat little Bosch socket set and these are a, a set of um, fittings from Kings and I will be able to find a connector that will work on here and more importantly I'll be able to find a connector that works on here and the all important torque driver. So they are both set at 30 pound now. So, which is the recommended um, setting for those particular mounts. So when it comes to fitting scopes, I really love my scopes to be symmetrical. So you know the gap between that point and that point, and that point, that point. I want them to be the same, and I want it to sit evenly across. Mm -hmm. However, with this Infuray Tube 50, it's a big scope. And I'm wondering how far back. Now this does compress, but that's still a long way back. So I'm gonna have to experiment with this one. The other thing is that turret is a very big turret and it's sitting right above the ejection port, right in the middle there. So I'm uh, umming and ahhing on this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a centre position but be willing to adjust it once I get in the field because really this is my first time of setting up a thermal scope. So for me this is a bit of a learning experience as well. So I'm going to go to my standard position and adjust accordingly. To uh, start the process I want a level point. So I look for somewhere on the scope that I can set a level up. Often it's in the turret, but this particular turret, it's got this very nice decorative raised button type function, which might throw off the level. However, this uh, control panel back here does have a level point. So I'm using that as my level point. So I'm making sure this is level. Back up here, checking on the rifle, right, make sure this is level. Level, level, and away we go. With the scope firmly in place, but not locked in place, I'm able to take the rifle out of the vise and check eye relief. There's every chance I may have to move the scope a little bit forward and a little bit back to suit my eye, but I won't know that until I shoulder it. At the same time, I'm going to check the reticle. We've used a system that should ensure that the reticle is exactly 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and on the horizontal, 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, but we won't really know until we look at it. It's amazing how much it is a little bit off compared to your eye, so it's always a great idea to check what the reticle looks like to your eye before you lock the scope down in place. And of course, starting in the middle, when we set the scope up initially, allows us to have that adjustment. If we were to have it all the way forward or all the way back, we'd lose a lot of that adjustment. Okay, so I've taken the rifle out of the vise and shouldered it to check eye relief. I'm happy where it is. As I said again, I'm going to make sure I do that in the field to double double check it. So by doing that, I've re-leveled it. Make sure the level at the front's okay. Make sure the level on the scope is okay. And then, because I really, really like doing this properly, I've got one micrometer out and I've measured the distance between there and there. And they're the same. Yes, I do that. I want it to be that accurate. So these are recommended at 18. So I'll set my torque wrench to do that. Now I will want that gap there to match that gap there, to match that gap there, to match that gap there. I want this to be pleasing to the eye as well as an effective hunting rifle. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm now going to do a alternating pattern 
and keep tightening down. And as I tighten down, I'm going to keep an eye on the, the level because it will move. So a little bit each time, up to 18 pounds on each one. Now the way I do this is really I'm working on a quarter turn on each. So a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more. More correctly there, to there, to there, to there. That's the pattern I use. And all the time, I'm keeping an eye on that level. Keeping an eye on that level. So just slowly, slowly on this job. And what I'm looking for is that across each of the mounting points. I want that single click. 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 Oops. Click. Okay. So what's with the blue tape, you may ask? Well, what this is, this is the cheapest way of saving ammo and time and your sanity at the range when you first sight this rifle in. So let me explain. There's a bit of blue tape that's touching the forward mount. There's a bit of blue tape touching the rear mount. So if I'm at the range and this scope moves a little bit forward, I'll see it crimp this crumple here. If it moves back, I'll see it crumple here. Okay. If it moves on the left right axis, these lines won't line up. They'll move out of alignment. So I can very simply, every time I fire this while I'm sighting this rifle in, I can check how effective the mount is holding it on the on the horizontal and it's holding it on the vertical with that that you know three cents worth of tape I'll save 30 rounds of ammo chasing a scope that is moving slightly but not moving enough for me to see it so that's my cheapest chips fail safe to make sure that when I fitted this scope, these mounts are at the proper poundage and they're mounted properly. So that's how I mount a scope ready for the range. As I said, I use a bench vise. This is a, or a clamping system. This is a, a Mark modified version. Um, as I said, the reason I like this particular one is I can there's two points of clamp. So if you think about a rifle or shotgun, they're generally, you know, the, the thickness right through is it changes. So this allows me with a couple of shims to clamp securely a firearm of just about any shape. And I can do lever actions, I can do bolt actions, I can do shotguns, I can do side by sides, a whole lot. Um, but that is something I made up. So have a look for a clamp system that suits your needs this is a i think it's a, um, it's a king chrome basically it's a torque and hex fit set that'll cover off and just about everything you'll ever need for a firearm i've got this little bosch socket set with a with um a, also a bit collection and a couple of adapters and that's even a small the ratchet there it's really fine quality and it's great for gun work a wheeler bat wrench as they call them which is basically my torque driver so it has torque settings there goes from uh, basically zero up to 60 which covers off everything the ruger mounts were quite high they're in the 40s or something like that if i remember correctly so it'll take care of most things the wheeler levels 
So that is the level that you use on the uh, the action to start with and also on maybe on the scope to get it level. And this is the clamping level that once you've got this set up, you use this and you clamp it on the barrel. Once it's clamped, then you know that level is always in the same place. So if the rifle moves, you've got a uh, true reading and because I'm the guy I am, I also use a cheap micrometer to do some of my measurements for me. And with that, that's basically most of my gun tools. So there you go. Any questions, comments, observations, let me know. Speak soon.